Antarctica, which is often regarded as a human void zone, is home to a number of species and a limited vegetation. The temperatures are very low here. As we learnt in our previous lesson, the average temperature of the continent is minus 60 degrees Celsius. The summer season here is very short, though the winters are usually dark and very, very long. Unlike other continents, the continent of Antarctica experiences a reverse of seasons. So the winter season in Antarctica is usually experienced between May to August, while the summer season is usually experienced between November to February. Here are two images that represent the temperature that exists during winter and summer season respectively. So during winter season we can see that the innermost part of the continent mostly experiences the lowest temperatures around minus 70 degrees Celsius or even lower than that. While the coastlines experiences temperature that are usually higher that is mostly around minus 20 degrees Celsius to 0 degrees Celsius. However, the temperatures are not the same during summer season. The summer season, which is short and usually exists for few weeks or a month or so, experiences have temperatures higher than the winter season. The winter season are long while the summer season is short. So we can see that the core of the continent that is right at the center, the temperatures are between minus 30 degrees Celsius to minus 20 degrees Celsius. While the coastlines have a temperature higher than the core or the center of the Antarctic landmass and these experience temperatures around 0 degrees Celsius and more. So by seeing these two representations, we can say that the average temperature of winter over the Antarctic landmass is minus 60 degrees Celsius, while the average temperature for summer months in Antarctica is 0 degrees Celsius. So the winter months in Antarctica are very long and these are usually very dark. So the continent is covered in darkness throughout the winter season and there is no sufficient light. So the continent does not receive enough sunlight during the winter season and the temperatures are very very low that is it has an average temperature of minus 60 degrees Celsius. But something opposite happens during the summer season. Unlike the winter season which experiences complete darkness, the summer season is where the continent experiences light throughout the day. So the summer season is short and has an average temperature of 0 degrees Celsius. Now the reason behind complete darkness in winter and complete daylight during summer is the location of the continent. It remains in the southernmost part of the earth and so there's a reverse of season. While the landmass in the northern hemisphere experiences winter, the opposite happens in Antarctica that is during summer. So this is what is the reason behind this unusual phenomena. Now another interesting fact about the Antarctic region or Antarctica is again its location. So we all know that while the Arctic region comprises of an ocean that is surrounded by land, the Antarctic region is right opposite. It is a landmass that is surrounded by ocean. Now though the Arctic region and the Antarctic region both are near the two extreme poles that is the North Pole and the South Pole respectively, why do we call Antarctica the coldest place on earth and why not the Arctic region? Now this is mainly because the ocean that is the Arctic Ocean here has a temperature higher than the ice that floats over the Arctic Ocean. So the temperature of the water body that is the Arctic Ocean here we are talking about it warms the air above the ocean making it a warmer place as compared to the Antarctic landmass or the Antarctic region. 98% of Antarctica is covered in ice. This is because during winter months it experiences light snowfall that piles up to form thick ice sheets. The continent experiences less than 8 inches of rainfall along the coastline mostly. 
Snowstorms and blizzards are common along the coastline of the continent. Chilly winds blow across the continent because there's no vegetation to check them, but the center of the continent is relatively calm. With such a unique climate, the continent of Antarctica also offers us with a spectacular light show. So, a spectacular light show in the southern hemisphere called Aurora Australis can be best seen from the southern landmasses, including Antarctica. Now, though Aurora Australis or the southern lights are a spectacular phenomenon that you can experience from Antarctica and is also a major tourist attraction, there is a threat that the continent also experiences. Here we are referring to the ozone hole that occurs over the continent of Antarctica every spring and is getting worse. So, in October 2021, NOAA and NASA scientists reported that the ozone hole that develops over Antarctica every spring was larger and deeper than the average in 2021. So in 2021, the scientists of NOAA and NASA have made researches and studies and shown that the ozone hole over the continent of Antarctica is larger and deeper or than any other reports or studies of any other year. So this is definitely a matter of concern. Now why do you think this ozone hole comes every year or forms every year during summer over Antarctica or the Antarctic region? This is mainly because of the ozone depletion. So the ozone layer is gradually depleting every year, mostly because of human activities and increased global warming. So what exactly is the ozone depletion? Without the ozone layer, the ecosystem will collapse, the skin cancer rates will skyrocket and Earth will not exist as it exists today. Ozone layer is a layer of gaseous molecules around the Earth and it protects the Earth from harmful UV rays. However, it itself is very fragile. In 1985, scientists found out that the ozone layer has depleted a lot and it has dissipated about 40% creating a hole over the Antarctic region. What followed was an international push by scientists, media and policy makers to ban CFCs and prevent an environmental catastrophe. So, how did we do it and what can we learn from it? Scientists like Dr. Solomon had held press conferences to inform the public about the probable large-scale depletion of the ozone layer. The ozone hole started showing up in TV shows and movies and it was famous throughout the country or throughout the globe. And all this awareness put pressure on the leaders across the world to act. The Montreal Protocol made it official and listed control methods to cut down on ozone depleting substances. Every single country eventually signed the protocol, making it the only universal treaty to ever be ratified and the most successful environmental agreement in the human history. So with the help of awareness and the Montreal Protocol, the conditions got a little better and it can be seen that in these two mappings of the concentration of the ozone layer, we see that while in 1994 the ozone hole over the Antarctic region was quite big, in comparison the hole over the Antarctic region in October 2019 was very less or very small. So. The maps of ozone concentration from September 1994 left and October 2019 in the right shows us the gradual healing of the ozone layer over the Antarctic region. As per the NASA discovery or the NASA studies, the 2019 ozone hole is the smallest on record since the day it has been discovered. So we can see with proper measures and guidance, the ozone hole can actually be healed and there can be a decrease or reduction in the depletion of the ozone layer that is very important for the protection of the earth from harmful UV rays. Now the continent of Antarctica does not have any formal government. However, to prevent exploitation of the continent and the resources it has to offer, there has been a special international treaty that has been signed by various nations. So, the landmark Antarctic Treaty was signed in the year 1959 by 12 nations. 
So here is a small representation of the 12 nations that had signed the Antarctic Treaty that bounds the 12 nations to not exploit the continent and do the best to preserve the white continent on Earth. Now, though in the beginning there were only 12 nations that had signed the Antarctic Treaty, later on many countries, including India, also signed the treaty and promised or vowed not to exploit the continent or any other resources that the continent comprises of. So before we proceed with the lesson, could you help me answer this simple question? In which year was the Antarctic Treaty signed? Was it the year 1999 or 1949 or 1959? Well, the correct answer is 1949. So in the year 1949, the Antarctic Treaty was signed by 12 nations. Now, as I already mentioned, the Antarctic Treaty bounds the 12 nations with certain conditions. And what exactly are these conditions as per the Antarctic Treaty? Well, here the nations are expected to have a free exchange of scientific plans and data. They also have to keep the area that is the Antarctic region nuclear free zone that is they cannot make the place a war zone or use nuclear weapons in the Antarctic region. Besides that there is conservation of Antarctica's resources. They cannot exploit the resources of Antarctica and simply conserve it. Besides these there is a ban on the mining activities. So over the years there were a lot of illegal mining that was going on in the continent of Antarctica as the continent is rich in many mineral resources. However, after the treaty there was a ban on all the mining activities that took place in the region. Now as I mentioned this is a nuclear free zone so there is also no military use but the region however is free for any scientific investigation. Now besides these six main points of the Antarctic Treaty, the most important point of this treaty was that all treaty nations, that is all the nations that has signed to the Antarctic Treaty has to ensure that there is no one who carries out any acts against the treaty. So they all have to be loyal to the treaty and have to make sure that they follow each condition as mentioned by the treaty. Now with the freedom to carry on with scientific investigations, there are around 70 permanent research stations representing different countries scattered across the continent of Antarctica. So as we learned in our previous lesson also, the continent is a continent of science. So there are a lot of researches that are going on over the continent and because of that there are 70 permanent research stations that are scattered across the continent and all these represent their respective nations or countries. NASA being the most important organization or the most important institution to carry on with such researches in Antarctica has been testing robots in Antarctica. Well, they have done this to see if the conditions here are as same as that on Mars. So if the tests go well or are successful in Antarctica, then they'll be able to compare or put together the conditions that are also prevalent in Mars and accordingly carry on with their research and study. Now, as I mentioned, India has actively participated in the researches and the studies that goes on over the continent of Antarctica. It was also the one who later signed the Antarctic Treaty and like other nations promised to not violate any act against the treaty. So just like other nations, India too peacefully carries on with its scientific investigations and researches on the continent of Antarctica. India established its first research station in the continent between the year 1982 to 1985 and this research station was known as Dakshin Gangotri. However, over time this research station got covered entirely with snow and was no more functional. Now because of that unfortunate situation, India continued with its research and investigation by setting up another important research center here that is the Maitri Research Station in the year 1989. Here is an image of the Maitri Research Station. Now with that, the third research station established by India in the continent of Antarctica is the Bharati Research Station in the year 2013. 
So we see that India, like any other country, is actively carrying on with investigations and researches over the continent of Antarctica. Now, though the continent is known to offer with so many mineral resources and other important resources, it also is a place that provides you with opportunities of a lot of scientific research and studies regarding global climate, regarding marine biology and also many other such studies that has interested scientists from across the globe unfortunately is suffering from a great loss because all these researches and tourism over the continent of Antarctica has exploited it over the years and making it as polluted as other continents or other areas on earth. The shipping activities in the water surrounding the ocean is also polluting the water bodies and disturbing the natural habitat of the marine animals that exist in the water bodies surrounding the ocean. Besides all that, the increase in global warming and the climate change also has majorly impacted the continent. The continent is believed to be shrinking in size because of continuous melting of glaciers because of the rising temperature and this unfortunate situation which soon lead to the extension of the continent so to preserve this beautiful continent we all need to be very careful on our part and the scientists need to be more careful with regard to their research and other activities that they carry on with over the continent of Antarctica don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon you can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the Delta Step app to learn one to one with our amazing teachers or to get access to all our 5000 plus amazing videos as per your school syllabus. Master each topic with our adaptive practice technology. Get million plus questions with step by step solutions and unlimited mock test. Get all your doubts resolved instantly. Learn via games and win amazing prizes like PlayStations and iPads. So at Delta Step, learning is not just fun and easy, it is rewarding too. So register for free now.